Are you serious? There's plenty of ways to kill an hour out there. Right now, you are killing some of one with me, Marcus Bronzy. And me, Nicholas Bright. What's going on? I'm all right, Brighty. Um, I'm in Cornwall at the moment, bruv. Um, it's where out I'm the sp- ends. Out the ends, bruv. Um, enjoying pasties, cider, and other Cornish isms. Uh, clotted cream. Yeah. Do you know they do their scones the other way up here? I'm not really a scone eater. But, um, scone or scone, though. Scone or scone, sorry. Sc- oh, sorry. I'm not really a scone eater. Sorry. Is, it, uh, uh, is, it, is there a difference? It's the same thing. Oh, oh okay, like, cool. But like, it's, 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 the big debate is how do you say it? <sighs> what is it I Shakespeare say, said? A rose is, is still a rose if called uh, something else. Or man, I, say, I say scone, man. I'm with you. I think scone in it, yeah? Scone is very posh. Oh, I'm going to have a scone. Oh, it's awfully nice. I got a mate that says plastic. Shout out to Kat Osman. She says plastic. You know, Kat. Does she? Yeah, yeah, says, yeah, of course. Ask Kat. Yeah, she's sick, by the way. Sick, sick PR. Yeah, for gaming. But ask Kat. Kat, do you want a plastic bag? And she'll go, a plastic bag? And everyone buses up every time. She, she, <laughs> she like, secretly, um, like, a member of the royal family and she hasn't told me. She's very regal, bruv. <laughs> She's regal. A plastic bag. A, plas- a plastic bag, darling. Yes, mm. yes, yes. But um, what are you up to, Nick, bruv? The, it's the dynamics of where you are sound a little bit different to as usual. Well, I'm in my yard at the moment. I'm just, mm. I'm just in my drum. But um, I've, I've been putting up some shelves. So, um, and by putting up some shelves, I don't mean flat pack furniture. I mean, I've ventured a little bit further for, for, for me. I'm, and the thing is, let me just say right now, disclaimer, I'm not a handy guy. And what I mean by that is I, I'm not one of these dudes that can build shit. It's just not, it's not on my skill set. But um, I'm putting up a MDF shelf. So I basically just bought a sheet of MDF and I'm like cutting it to size. And I feel like a real motherfucking man right about now. So bar cutting down the tree and, you know, whatever, turning it into MDF, which is some long process. You've actually, you're properly making this, like you're building this. Yeah, I, I like to think that like, there was like cavemen, right? And then like, there's me. Like, we're pretty much level. You're the next step. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm so like handy with my hands and shit. Shit. Um, and yeah. wait, have you put up brackets as well? Like, how do you, how do you put up? I don't even know how you put up a shelf, bruv. No, no, no. It's easier than that. See, in my flat, I've got a picture rail. Do you know what a picture rail is? No. It's like, you know, like a skirting board. Yeah. It goes along the bottom. It's like oh. a thing that goes along the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, it's, it's, called, it's, it's, it's called a picture rail, so it's like not not right at the ceiling, but like kind of a little bit down from the ceiling. Yeah, and like I've just rested it because it's in like a cove, so I've just rested it on like the picture board in the cove. So I'm using uh, stuff that was already there. I'm making the most out of the scenario, you know. So you had to measure the wood to make sure it's been cut to size to fit into the cove. Yeah. Tell the truth, though. It's really satisfying doing stuff like that when you do man stuff in it. It, it, it proper is, and the thing is, it I've j- I literally just slotted it in, and it um, pause, and it slotted in perfectly. Zing! And yeah. you were like, "Yeah." D- did you did you do the step back and look at it and just go, I've, "Yeah." I've stepped back. I've looked at it like it it, it, it it fitted in perfect. I'm looking at it right now, but the only thing that I'm a little bit unhappy with is um, the the left hand side of the shelf slightly obscures the curtain which goes over my window. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to like, like cut a, cut a triangular section off, if that makes sense. So like there's, there'll be no point on the left-hand side of the shelf. One sec. So you're out manning yourself by not just building, you're now modifying yeah, I'm modding spoke it. furniture. Yeah, man. I'm modding it. Listen, if anyone out there needs some shelves done out of MDF to, spit, to fit a specific alcove, I'm your man. Because, you know, I've, yeah. I've mastered that. I've, I've done one and I think I'm the best in the world at it now. So there's no point going to anybody else who's got qualifications and shit. Just come to me. And it's got to have a picture rail as, as well, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The picture rail needs to, because the minute, like, there needs to be some drilling or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I, I'm not quite, I'm not quite at them levels yet. I mean, you can risk it, but like, you know, I don't think I'm quite there. All right. All right. I'm, I'm seeing you right now. I'm seeing you wearing denim. Yeah. I'm seeing you with a utility belt, a pencil behind your ear and some goggles. I don't know. What, that's just how I see you right now. Um, I'm not, I'm not wearing a utility belt. Um, I'm not wearing <laughs> denim. I don't have goggles on, but 
I did, <laughs> did earlier on have a pencil behind my ear. I don't yes. have one right now, but, but earlier on I did. I'll, I'll concede that. All right, cool. Wicked. Um, how you been killing time recently, though, by the way, Nick? Apart from, obviously, building bespoke furniture. I've been... It, it's been... It, it, it's been a, a, a pretty chilled out week for me this last week in terms of like doing fun stuff. So let me rephrase that. The week hasn't been chilled out. I've been working, but it's like chilled out in terms of doing fun stuff that people who listen to how to kill an hour care about. But, um, I've been looking after my dogs because my, uh, my better half has been away for the past couple of weeks. So, yeah. uh, I've had, I've had to look after the mutts. So I had to go to Liverpool where she lives, um, and stay with the dogs for a bit, which was cool. Ah, all right, all right, all right. some time with the dogs. Um, How old then, are the dogs now? Uh, one is two, and the other one no one one is three, and the other one is two. All right. Yeah, yeah. So that one, they're basically like exactly a year apart. Two miniature sausage dogs, miniature dachshunds. Wicked. Um, yeah, sorry. Anyway, you're saying I just always like to ask people how old their dogs are because I, I like to know whether they tell me in human years or dog years. I uh, know I, I don't understand. I don't even know how many dog years are in a human year. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's one of those things. I'm I'm cool with being ignorant about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like in the grand scheme of things, who gives a shit? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, you know, like so, some people are mad into it. Some people are like, oh, yeah, uh, this is this is Rex. He's five. That's seven hundred and eighty-five in dog years. Like I'm just like, fam, I don't care. Like, dogs don't me, do that about us. Years. Yeah. Enough, I'm not counting anything else in dog years. I'm not like going around <laughs> anywhere else in my in my life. Going, oh yeah, seven dog years ago I did that. Like, just not doing it, are you? Like, it's so stupid. <laughs> Fuck it up. Sorry, mate. Anyway, what else are you saying you've been up to? Um, I've been watching season, I, I don't even know, right? I've, I've been watching season five of Homeland. There's probably people out there like, fam, season five, what are you talking about? I didn't even know season five was on Netflix yet. So I, I've been I'm getting back into Homeland. You know, when you, ha you haven't watched a series for ages and you've watched like loads of other ones yeah. and then like you go back to another one when a new one, when a new season starts and you're like, I can't fucking remember what the hell happened. Like, yeah, you, you got to do a recap. It's mad. Like I didn't do the recap. I just went straight in. I'm, I'm five episodes deep now in that. So um, I've been enjoying that. But the big news of the week in terms of TV, well, not not necessarily TV in 2016, is it? But the Grand Tour is back. Uh, did you watch it? I watched it. Do you know what? I've not watched it. Producer Billy mentioned it a few episodes back. He specifically bought a fire stick for it. Um, okay. Is it Amazon Fire Stick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he bought, he bought one of those specifically for it. Um, I have not watched it. Have you watched the first episode? Of course, of course, bro. They've been like going on. They've been banging on about this for like months and months and months. Of course, I'm going to watch it. Okay. And I weren't, I weren't one of the Supremos who like stayed up like past midnight on Thursday night to catch it because it got it dropped on Amazon um, like Friday Friday midnight. So like you could have stayed up to watch it, but I just watched it on like Saturday night something like that yeah kind of it kind of fights against the whole point of on demand if you're going to wait up for something in it it's not yeah, like a exactly. sports event where everyone's going to spoil it for you like if it's a exactly. fight i get it because you open as soon as you open twitter face whatever you're going to see the whole thing anyway like if yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Con conor mcgregor's epic win recently but um yeah. so yeah I, the thing is the thing is right I, I i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give anybody any spoilers so if you're listening to the pod and you ain't seen it don't worry i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say what happened or anything but what i will tell you about the the concept as a whole is that i don't know man like i know we're all about technology on this podcast that's what fundamentally why we do this mm. but with the on-demand stuff i am a little bit like ah like i miss like when top when when they used to do top gear and it was on tv the three of them doing top gear you would get all the if you watched it live anyway you'd get all the like banter with everybody else on the internet talking about the show watching it at the same time as you blah blah, blah. that's pretty much all gone on the from, from the grand tour because you're all watching it at different times nobody is completely synchronized watching it like well there probably is but just by chance but do you know what i mean like, yeah you don't get the kind of live oh my god did you see that explosion of that car that was sick like there's there's, there's yeah. not that you, i mean you can by clicking on the hashtag of course but it's not live you're not in the moment it's like the social side of stuff. Like there was a time when 
Big Brother was watched by a lot more people and you'd actually go on Twitter and watch Big Brother and bust up and crack up at the at the banter on Twitter while Big Brother Live is on or stuff like that. And it's, it's quite a social, isn't it, really, when you think about it? Yeah, yeah, it's massively social. And, and, and like, especially, I don't know, like, if you if you look back at Big Brother, right, at um, more prolific years, like when man like Victor was in it, oh my god <laughs> do you know what though i think i think i think when victor was in it was even like prior to even twitter existing to be fair yeah yeah he 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 just smashed it he was everywhere was did he, did he say he was going to be 20 was that victor <laughs> i just wanted I, I just wanted to big up victor basically yeah yeah shout out to victor man legend legend um so yeah man a, a busy you've been doing something else are you allowed to talk to me about that thing you spoke about earlier in the week or could do we have to say that for another episode I'm trying to remember what we spoke about earlier on in the week. Um, the thing you were doing on Friday, last Friday, Friday, Friday. Oh my God, my days. Oh no, we can talk. We can talk about this. We can talk about the skill show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah talk to course. us about the skill show. The skill show. Totally Four. forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. So basically, there's this event that um, that that happens in Birmingham. It's a yearly event. It happens at the NEC now. Um, if you don't know what the NEC is, which I assume not not everybody does, because unless you're from Birmingham or from the UK, you're probably like, what the hell is that? It's the National Exhibition Centre. And it's a um, little fun fact. It's where Gladiators used to be filmed, which was obviously Epic. the big boy show of Epic. life. Epic. Yeah, yeah. Who was your favourite Gladiator? Wolf. Oh, come on, bruv. It's Every all about time. Shadow. Shadow. Shadow was the guy. Oh, my God. You the... couldn't even see my guy. He was like, <laughs> just in, he was like so scary and he was undefeated at Jewel. Do you remember which one Jewel was? Yeah, that was where they got the, the lollipops, the big sticks. Pug- and just, pugil stick. The pugils. <laughs> come on. Come on. Man, man was such a savage. He used to break the pugil stick on people's heads. Yeah, it wasn't fair watching them fight. It was like it was a fucking beast. Is it? I used, I used to like Wolf because he cheated, but no, nah, Shadow was Shadow was cold, man, and also he yeah. was blacker than black as well, and he was called Shadow, <laughs> which is fucking know, sick. Which is super racist. <laughs> you couldn't though, do it? you couldn't do that nowadays, could you? You could and not the do black that. Girl was called Nightshade as well. <laughs> so when I look back at it, I'm like, bro, is this show fucking racist, like. <laughs> There's the one guy called Shadow and then the black girl's called Nightshade. I'm like, you gotta take a piss. <laughs> Fucking hell. You gotta take a piss, mate. <laughs> Right. fucking straight <laughs> race it you know what bro simple times isn't it no one... but yeah it's, it's different oh, to be fair back then man like jim davidson was on tv and it was calm so you yeah know, you say? yeah bro there's like we could reel off loads of michael barrymore was on yeah. tv and it was calm bro fuck yeah, hell. Fucking, uh, anyway anyway Savile was back... still on the roads anyway ah, <laughs> back, back to the nec let's take it back there so gladiators <laughs> was filmed at the national exhibition center I've never been there before. Right? It's the first time I've been to the National Exhibition Centre. That place is fucking massive, bro. It is like, it's like a town. Like, it's, I can't really describe it because it's like loads of different like halls. They're massive, like different halls, humongous. And there's lots of different things going on in them. Um, the radio station that I work for, One Extra, we were up there with um, BBC Asian Network as well. Uh, so me and Punjabi Hit Squad, we were basically teaching some of the youngsters who go to the skill show how to DJ. And then we were doing like a bit of a set and stuff like that. Yeah, it's cool, man. It was cool. Nice, nice. And how was it giving back? Yeah, man, it was good. Like It was, it was interesting to see or, or, or interesting to rediscover how hungry you are when you're that young. Like uh, the, the people that we were dealing with were like sixth form and college level. So um, like what age is that? 16, 17 years old. And um, they were just like on it, man. The, the, the different varieties of people that wanted to have a go on the decks was crazy. Like there was um, there was a lot of people that had never, ever done it before. So I had to teach them the, 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 the like, complete basics. But then there was this one kid that came up. And I didn't realize that he kind of knew how to use the stuff. So I, tra- I was I was talking to him. And then all of a sudden, man, just fu- just just like fucking put the mix in. Bang. <laughs> like the mix is perfect. I was like, you don't obviously know what you're doing. I'm just going to let you carry on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it, it was cool, man. Like really, really um, good day. 
Sick. And what's your technique for teaching people to DJ? Because there's loads of different theories and stuff like yeah, some yeah. people well, are well, hands on. Like, well, the, what? Thing that I, the thing that I said to, to all of the kids that I spoke to, first and foremost, is before you, before you even touch the equipment, can you count music? Can you count how many beats are in a bar? And if they don't know what you mean by that, the first thing that I teach them is that all music goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you always have to go on one. So you press play on the next deck that you're mixing in on one. Because a lot of people kept pressing it on four. And I'm like, no, 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 you press it on one. Like, I know that I sound, I sound like I'm talking gibberish right now if you're not into DJing, but it's like, there's four beats in a bar and you always have to go on the first beat of the bar. So that's like the first thing that I teach them. And then the second thing that I teach them is do they want to learn how to mix or do they want to learn how to scratch? Because, you know... Like if you if you're a hip hop DJ, you might not really care that much about mixing. You might just want to scratch stuff in. But if you want to be a house music DJ, you obviously got to know how to mix. Um, but then, like for me, it's all about just getting them on the gear. Like I don't want to bore them to tears, man. Remember, these guys are used to being at school where they have to sit there and listen to teachers chat to them for ages and ages and ages. Like they just want to have a go on the shit, man. They just want to have a go on the stuff. Sick. Oh man, it's good to hear you doing your thing, bro. Giving back to the community, Nick Bright, brightening yeah, the community, guy. shining a light. Now I'm trying to find a hook line for you, <laughs> <laughs> Nick Bright, building shelves and teaching the community how to DJ since 2016. There you go, Black. Yes, fam. Look at that catchy. Not so much, but you know. <laughs> yeah, still. Oh, that's that's good, man. It's always good to do that. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember your first ever mix? The first oh, time what? you mixed two tunes well. Nah, no, I yeah, remember. I'm too, the, I'm it was, too old. Is it? it was, I remember. It's the first time the man them didn't laugh at me because I used to mix and it used to sound like people. Someone had like opened the kitchen cabinet and there were too many pots and pans in there, mm. and they all just fell on my head. It was like sounded like it was frigging the end of Home Alone. Yeah, you know like when I, mean? I, when I started, it was like I was at the Grand National, bro. It was so peak. It's like. <laughs> 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 and then when you finally tidy up it's like you're like oh shit I'm a don you get yeah. excited put two hands in it and then it slips out straight away yeah, yeah. Oh. Can, you, can you remember like when you used to act like at the start when you were learning and it's like you would fluke a mix and you'd be like oh my god i yeah. am the sickest guy yeah yeah you yeah you saw yeah man all the time I'd, i wouldn't even say i, I fluked it bro i just that fluke didn't exist to me then bro you i was just, just like yeah like it's calm cash casual um <laughs> anyway um killing time this week i'll tell you what i've done nick I've, I've been um i went and saw fantastic beasts and where to find them oh uh, how was that yeah i gotta say shout out to bfi imax I went and saw it in Waterloo uh, in with central London. If you're from anywhere else other than London, I'll just make it simple. Um, and just south of the river. And I've got to say, for starters, what a massive screen. I always forget how big an IMAX screen is until I go to one. And yeah, we're in a day and age where I could watch a film on my phone. I could watch it on a tablet, on my laptop. I could probably like screen, like throw the screen over to a TV if it's got like a cr Chromecast or whatever. But there's something about going to the cinema still that excites me, you know, like a proper big screen with proper sound, with a massive sound system and 3D glasses. Really does it for me, man. I don't know how you feel about this, whether you think this is something that's dying out, but it's, I still find it kind of exciting. Do you, do you know what? Like I love going to the cinema, real talk. I'm, 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 a, I'm a big fan for going to the cinema because it's dying out. You know, it's how more and more like people are pirating movies online and, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to the cinema. But I really, really do enjoy it. But I'm going to be honest. Um, I've never been to the IMAX in, in London. Never, ever. I've not been there. So I don't even know what it looks like in there. Let me put it in perspective for you how big this screen is, Nick. There's a lift at the back of the cinema to take you to the back row. Right. OK. That's how big this, that's how tall the screen is from top to bottom. It's if you were to run up the stairs from the bottom of the screen to the top, you'd do the Rocky dance at the st you know like when Rocky runs oh, up the shit. stairs. Yeah, yeah. If like you got that? to the top of the stairs, you'd be like, yeah, her. yeah. It's it's massive. It's a massive, massive screen. It's I don't know like the measurements, but it's really tall. Like, it's like two double decker buses high, I think. Oh, Something like that. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like ma it's a massive, massive screen. Well, it's but an amazing it, building. It's like in the middle of a roundabout, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's um, it's 
uh, it's really weird because you walk up to it and it's like you said it's in the middle of this massive roundabout but the roundabout isn't like a single lane roundabout it's like a multi-lane massive roundabout and you walk up to it and it looks really daunting because you're like how am I going to get across this roundabout to get in and then you but it's like the, underneath isn't yeah it? yeah yeah you have to sneak in underneath go down some yeah, yeah. clothes and whatever but um, yeah it's, it's a nice little area the, the closest I've got to it is my uh, my girlfriend she was she was on a campaign for Nike and uh, they had her on the whole of the outside of the IMAX sick yeah, sick yeah. sick did you drive around it a couple of times just be like yeah, yeah beep, I to wait, that's my man, missus man to go have a look. Yeah, yeah. She, she was like she was like running she done a photo shoot in hawaii and then she was like running around the whole of the outside of the imax <laughs> that's sick i would have just hung around the, the roundabout going oh, hey bruv see her yeah there that's that's my girl hey, bruv. <laughs> can you imagine everyone would be like fuck off mate <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as if you fucking <laughs> lunatic piss off <laughs> but um but yeah got in the cinema um being a typical Marcus Bronzy, I actually fucking left the tickets, but shout out to the staff there who actually got me in there. I, bruv, I rolled up with no tickets and still got in. Yeah? Lyrical Bronzy Don. is that guy. Lyrical Don. But Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Him. I'm going to be honest with you, Nick, and you, the listener, I like Harry Potter, but I'm not saying I'm a pothead. Do you know what I mean? I'm not... Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. I fucking hate Harry Potter. So that's that's where I am with it. You? Why do you hate it? I'm just not into it, man. Like, like people, people are going to look at me all mental now. Like, people who listen to this podcast are going to change their opinion of me. But I don't like Harry Potter. I don't like Lord of the Rings. I don't like Star Wars. Like, I'm just not into all of these these things. There, it's not it's not for me. I like things like Fast and Furious, bro. <laughs> That's my level. <laughs> That's your franchise. I love it how I just dissed three of the biggest franchises in the world like they're dead and I'm like yeah Fast and Furious though I'm yeah. there I'll, I'll take Fast <laughs> and Furious and Police Academy in <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell but so, um, when it comes to Harry Potter I spoke about this on my radio show I couldn't even name the four houses you know there's like houses in Harry Potter like Slytherin and Gryffindor, fucking something else and, Hufflepuff yeah, t- and and know. something else yeah, Sliv- I don't know. Slytherin, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, and oh, they told me on the weekend, man. I can't see. I just I, I can't even remember the, the next one. Dragon Snout. There you go. I made it up. But wow. well, that sounds about right, isn't it? Dragon Snout. <laughs> it does. That does sound really right as well. There you go. Or or another name for cocaine. But um, so <laughs> basically, so Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So where it sits in the whole Patty, Harry Harry Potter franchise, Nick, is there are the seven films, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in one of the films, or no, a few of the films in the books, there's a book, me- uh, me- another book mentioned in, so in class, there's a book that's mentioned called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So it's like a textbook right. that they study. Um, and I think it was for Comic Relief. Uh, J.K. Rowling, um, the author of all the books, she made a special book, which was that Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Okay. And apparently it went down so well that <clears throat> the team at Warner, but well, to be fair, you'd want to make every, anything JK Rowling does about Harry Potter into a film in it. They decided to yeah, make it into course. a film about three years ago and it, it dropped and it's kind of set 70 years before Harry Potter. So it's, okay. it's set. It's not set in the UK. It's set in New York. So already it's like millions of miles away and years away from like the original Harry Potter story. So, I kind of walked in there like, do, did I need to have to watch Harry Potter first uh, to understand it? And luckily, you don't need any knowledge about Harry Potter to watch it. You could watch it. Um, and also, I don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing that you can tell me is that it wasn't as much of a kiddie film. No, for real? Yeah. If I'm honest, there aren't as many young people in it. There are some like young protagonists in it, but there aren't as many young people in it as 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 obviously there is in the school of frigging... Um, uh, uh, obviously, what's it called again? The school they go. Uh, Hogwarts. Hogwarts. That's it. You know better than me. So it's obviously, Hogwarts is packed full of kids. This is in New York. This is on the roads, bruv on the streets. Yeah, the there's end. a lot more adult. The ends, fam. There's a lot more adults floating around. Um, and By kiddie film. Do you mean like the the type of people that are going to go and watch it, or do you mean the people that are in it? I just yeah, I feel like the people that are in it aren't that young. And also, when I'm when I was watching it, I was like, bar the fact that this didn't have swearing in it. And like mad bloodshed, this didn't feel like a, a children's film. You know, you can watch a film like yeah, yeah. Shrek and it's got bits for adults and bits for kids. Yeah. I didn't feel like this was a kid's film, but... Maybe, maybe, maybe. I got a theory. 
maybe they thought about this and when you got to look at when the the very first Harry Potter movie came out right the the the, the fans of the Harry Potter franchise have grown up with the actors from Harry Potter so you got to think like when Daniel Radcliffe was in the first Harry Potter he was a little boy like but now he's like he's a he's a grown ass man so all of the people that watch Harry Potter or grew up with Harry Potter are grown ups now as well. So they don't want to see a kiddie film. Maybe they would want to see like a film. Do you know what I mean? It's not like so kiddie and aimed at children. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That make that makes sense. Because then you just give you know, the young people. They want to cash in, innit? Yeah. And you give the young people, they can just watch Harry Potter 1 through till 7. That's what I'm saying. And then when they're ready, then when they've graduated, they can check the film. But yeah, man, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And um. The storyline for me, like I said, I'm not a big Harry Potter person, and I and I managed to gather like get what was going on. It, it is kind of what it says on the tin. There's a lot of fantastic beasts in it, um, and I was watching it in 3D as well. I've got to say, the 3D was on fleek for that film. Mm. Certain films I watch 3D, and I'm like, what's the point, mate? Like, but then other yeah, films, yeah, yeah. the 3D was going on well. Um, it was as good as Avatar, though, in 3D. It, you know what, Nick? It's like saying. That was my first ever real 3D experience though, Avatar. I don't think anything can ever be Avatar because, you know, it was like, it was unheard of then, innit? Like, yeah, that and level also of 3D. That, that film, Avatar, was, it was developed like yeah. solely shot 3D, for that yeah. purpose. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think now you're seeing more and more films that are shot that way. This looked like it wasn't, it was native 3D. That's what they call it when they shoot it 3D. So it looked right. really, really good. Story-wise, um, like I said, slightly more adult storyline. And you kind of get to see a time when there's more adult wizards around and what they do, how their society works, why and how they hide magic and how they use magic and, and sort of how it was used back in the day. Do you know what I mean? But um, right. it was a good, it was a good film. I walked out, I thought it was pretty cool. I'm going to knock okay. it though. There's a couple of things that piss me off about it though. Yeah. Is the stories are so good in Harry Potter. You do not need any famous actors in it. Right. Now, you'll get this once you've seen this. There's a few actors in there. I'm not just talking about the the, the lead, the gentleman that played, um, uh, the same guy that played Stephen Hawkins. Um, I can't remember his name, but I'll find, I'll find out in a second. But um, there's a few actors in there that they've given like roles. And I'm like, there's no need to have the actor in there. And there's a specific actor in there. And I'm like, there's no need to have you in this, in this film franchise at all, bruv. Like... The whole point of Harry Potter is unknowns. Really? Yeah, man. Like, remember the first Harry Potter? Like, Harry Potter was unknown, innit? Like, uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, they did yeah. have some sick actors around him, but it was mainly about him. But then there's a few actors. When I watched this, I was just like, there's just a specific actor in there. I'm like, why have you got to bring him into the franchise, bro? I don't want to say his why name. Why you got this guy stealing the limelight? Yeah, man. I'm just like, and everyone was like in the cinema, oh, it's him. But I'm like, that's not going to make the story good. But you know, but yeah, but um, yeah. yeah, man. So that was it, man. Um, fantastic beats and where to be somewhere to find them. So, would you recommend it though for, for yeah for, for yeah. the viewers to go and see? I reckon it would swing you. The listeners, I should say. Um, I reckon. I reckon you. I reckon you'd honestly. I reckon you'd go in. And you'd be like, that wasn't actually that bad. I think you've had loads of people telling you that Harry Potter's wicked, and if you don't like something, and everyone keeps telling you it's good, it kind of makes you hate it. Like, say you didn't like chips. And you were like, I don't like yeah. chips. Everyone's like, Nick, nah, chips are great, man. Ketchup. You're like, nah, but I just don't like chips. Yeah, but Nick, have you tried them with cheese? Nah, I just don't like chips. Yeah, but sort of, you know, I fucking hate chips because I hate you banging <laughs> on about it. Fuck your chips and fuck <laughs> Harry Potter. That's where I think you are. I mean, I, I, I am more partial to a French fry rather oh. than a, a big fat English chip. But, you know, I get, I get the point you're making. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man um I, I give it some love i give it some love man and i'd, okay. I'd say definitely go out there and watch it you won't be pissed off that's it eddie redmayne he plays newt um redmayne Red um yeah he's all right in it as well but the story's pretty cool man i think they've they're, they're gonna hit off another little franchise of of it's gonna be like star wars isn't it it's gonna be like episode one really isn't it they've gone back all this time. rogue one bollocks so you see like i said i don't watch star wars so i don't really get it are these are these new ones coming that are coming out now are these not like... These are continuations are these... from the, the new Star Wars. So there was episode one through three. Yeah. All right. So the first Star Wars films were episode no, four, no, five, I know and the, six. No, no, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And it went four, five, six. Then it went one, two, three. I so now that. we're at seven, eight, nine. But I think this is oh, seven man. and a half that Rogue One is seven and a half. Mate, they got to pack it in, mate. 
Fucking <laughs> hell. He's having a laugh at you. I mean, the only film franchise that can go on this long is Fast and Furious. We're about to get into Fast and Furious 8. Now that I can get with, you know? Fucking Star Wars. Bruv, what are they actually going to do in Fast and Furious 8? Like, what? Drive what? some cars! <laughs> But where are they going to take the cars now? We, we've seen cars driving down the sides of buildings in Dubai. What's next? Underwater cars? Space cars? Do you know what makes me laugh about Fast and Furious, right? Is when, when you watch it and then people go, No, this is so fake, man. I can never have It's like, I know, bruv, it's a film. Like, you're sitting there watching Star Wars saying it's amazing. <laughs> if this is fake, then fucking Star Wars is fake. Come on, man. <sighs> what, Star Wars is fake? Know. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> you know, what I mean? what? you mean there's not fucking monsters that can play instruments in a bar? Like, <laughs> fucking shut up. You mean there's not camp robots walking around? Like, <laughs> so stupid. Fuck it, I don't know. I don't know. I think the lesson to be learned is everyone's got their franchise, isn't it? And yours yeah. is clearly... It just so happens that, that, what, what's, it so happens, Mark, that everybody else is just really stupid, and like, you know, I'm just, I'm just the really clever one. <laughs> obvs, obvs, yeah, obvs. clearly. <laughs> On that note, yeah, stupid fucking people, you can now take them out of your life. And when I say life, I say social media. A little part of your social media, you can now take what you want out of it. And that's Twitter has introduced the mute word feature. Have you heard or seen this feature, Nick? The only thing that I've seen of it is I saw you tweeting about it the other night. It's, um, that means Nick has definitely not muted me. So basically, long story short, it's real simple. You can mute words from your timeline. So in your timeline, if a tweet has a word that you have muted in it, you do not see the tweet. What? So like, yeah. so like, so if I'm if I don't want to fucking watch people going on about X Factor and Honey G, I can just mute the word X Factor and Honey G. Yeah, X Factor, Honey and G. But if somebody's having a really good cereal, you might not find out about their great new cereal if the word honey's in your thing. But but yeah, so... Yeah, oh, that's... Uh, that... You can freely tag... Right, okay. So anything. hang on, hang on. So that's, that, that's a bit of a shame though because it's like it, it does specific words, not word combinations. I've not tried a couple of words. I can try right now. Let me try Honey G because I will not be upset if Honey G is not on my timeline. Even though I'm starting to like her now. Honey G on X Factor. Uh, she might win it though still and, and I'd, I think I'd like it why not why not it, it, I think we all need proof that it is it is that silly muted words look man the show has jumped the shark anyway man everybody knows the show is dead yeah yeah right honey G oh you can do phrases yeah so honey G's in there that's good because cool. otherwise like you say man if someone's having some like you know honey nut cornflakes or whatever you know you need to know about that ah yeah yeah so it's pretty good so what what sort of shit would you mute nick um well x factor and honey g are two of the things that i probably would mute um i reckon that i would also mute i uh, know because you can't you can't mute like people that put up selfies that's not possible is it <laughs> Cause what, it, has like be, a, it has to be words a photo scanner that got rid of selfies yeah that would be amazing yeah. maybe we could think about future features that people could give that twitter could work in and somehow uh, eradicate from your timeline because i would very much like them to sort out a feature that can completely erase from my life people that um you know like people that fish for sympathy on social media Fuck me. Yeah, we all know it, They're so it? annoying. We all you know, know like, it, yeah. like they, 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 they'll say something like, oh my God, worst day ever. But we won't say anything else. I'm like, if you ain't going to tell us what the fucking worst day ever consisted of, don't fucking tell us it's the worst day ever. You know, you know what, what it I mean? is? You know what it is though, Nick, innit? You know what it is? Open the fridge, not enough milk in a cer- for the cereal. That's what it was. Yeah. Worst not enough ever. milk for the honey G's. Not enough milk for the honey G's. Hey! Not enough <laughs> milk for the honey G's. That's what it is. Or or went to the sock drawer, only one sock in there. No other socks. Oh, oh, that, worst that, to be day fair, that, ever. Is, that is the worst day ever if that does happen. Do you know what annoys um, me? When you, put on, when you put on a pair of socks that you like and you see a hole in them and you're like, fucking, I've got to take them off now, innit? You've got even- the... the- 
I call them Jesus socks, innit? Yeah, I just I don't do that anymore. When I was a kid, I'd wear them socks, bruv, to the last string. They were st- I'd try and put them on, even though I probably would be better just resting the sock on the top of my foot and putting my foot mm. into a trainer. Uh, yeah, I'd wear them down. But now, as soon as I see a little hole, they got to go, man. Gone. Gone. Because my toes try to creep through them in the day. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not yeah. having that. Not having that. Not Man's not rating the Jesus socks. Holy thing. You get me? I want them holy, rating it. Don't want them holy toeses. Yeah, me. I'm not on that. <laughs> but um, I probably, what else would I mute? I'd probably mute out a lot of political stuff because I'm not saying it's not yeah, important, yeah. but I just don't. Same. I just, I'm really paranoid about this, Nick, is that there's so much stuff out there. I really feel like social media could sway votes in everything. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I would definitely mute um, political shit, man. Like, I I I no I don't know if you're aware of this uh this little thing that's been happening in the UK over the last few months called Brexit but um I'm so fucking bored of Brexit Brexit needs to go into that it's almost like this is Twitter's room 101 you know the part of the show on BBC 1 you're you're just putting shit in room 101 yes yes but that's it might, what this is but it's it's actually given everyone the power to just get rid of this direct bullshit that's getting pushed into into our faces isn't it like so yeah yeah it's interesting uh, I'd, man i'd it's also get rid of like uh like new like articles that aren't real articles kardashians they were going straight yeah, away yeah, kardashians, straight in, kardashians straight in. kim kanye kim yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. E- even though i went to see kanye in miami and i like and i'm a fan of kanye's music but i can't take the circus that he rolls with man Fuck yeah hell. yeah yeah just, you like the music just, yeah. piss off like yeah 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 you can't like that take all that yeah apparently madness. whilst we've been recording this or or in the run-up to recording this he's cancelled all the rest of his saint pablo tour why was that why is that well he, he stormed off stage the other night innit? like he, he went on another epic kanye west rant just about how everyone's racist and everybody hates him and blah 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 the usual kanye shit that he moans about and then he, he should talk to stage. fucking nightshade and fucking shadow yeah, exactly yeah he don't you know, know fucking I mean? racism like that bruv yeah he yeah. wouldn't even be called kanye west he'd be called blackie west that's what he'd be called <laughs> darkness west back in the day <laughs> uh, well, yeah he, he stormed off stage and apparently he's cancelled the rest of the tour is what i'm seeing i, I saw I saw uh, something earlier on on Twitter. Yeah, well, where I'm where I'm at, my internet's a bit shit. Basically, I'm, and I'm not on it that much because I've got stuff to do. But like, I've seen there we go. He stormed off, and that he has he's done some interview as well at the same time. I I, I didn't even know about an interview. All I've I've just seen the video of him on stage whinging, and then um, like he storms off. Why? Like, why? Well, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to storm off of that stage because obviously it's an elevated stage. So what he stormed off the he's elevated whing- stage. No, no, he's whinging, uh, and yeah. then like, like they lower the stage down because like because I've been to the show in it, so I know uh, at the end of the show how how it works when he's when he's performing Ultralight Beam. It's the last tune of the show. Like the stage kind of turns into a ramp back to the floor, and then he like leaves whilst Ultralight Beam is playing. But like. That didn't happen he, the, the other night. He only done a couple of songs and then the stage went to a ramp and then like, he just fucked off. <laughs> He's like, Scene. I'm out of it. Because I was yeah, going to yeah. say, that'd be really awkward if he stormed off stage and quit the concert but stayed up there while everyone yeah, left. Can you imagine? Just it'd be, there, like, it'd like, be like farting in a lift and somebody walks in and stands in front of you. You know that awkward yeah. feeling? You're like, oh shit. Yeah, we, got, we, right, we, so we both have to sit in this right now. Pitchfork, Pitchfork tweeted an hour ago, a rep for Kanye West confirms that the remainder of the St. Pablo tour has been cancelled, whereas XXL magazine said Kanye West has officially cancelled the St. Pablo tour. So, yeah. Looks but why like did he, he actually cancelled. storm off, though? That's what I don't get. Because he was just ranting, man. He was ranting about racism and shit, you know, like just the usual Kanye West shit. Yeah, but like what he has to understand is people didn't come there for that. It's like if I go to a political debate and they start trying to play ultralight beam, I'm fucking pissed off. So what the fuck is Kanye West doing? Trying to do a political chat. Like do all his political chat while everyone's come there to hear the tunes. Did he, did he do any of that when you were watching him? He, he did do a little bit of like chat, but it wasn't, he didn't do that much. It was feel good when I went to see him because the election wasn't on. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. no one was really, the, the, the run up to the election was happening because that like, Trump, Donald Trump was actually in Miami when I was in Miami. He was yeah. there doing a, doing a rally. Um, I didn't go down to it though, surprisingly, but, um, <laughs> Kanye was just in a feel good mood, man. And it like the, the show in Miami was really, really good. 
levels were high. Uh, he did, like I said, he'd done a bit of a rant and then these two girls that were sitting in front of me and my girlfriend were like, oh my God, like he has been talking for like five minutes. I was like, <laughs> you, know, you two shut the fuck up. Uh, no, I would have just tapped him on the shoulder and gone, you see, yeah, yeah, that's my girl. So I would have done. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> yeah, in, uh, in what? Okay, yeah, don't matter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> freaking hell, man. I don't know, Kanye, man. Like for someone who brought us this much good music, I'm still allowing him. I'm letting him off. But it's getting close to the point where I'm just gonna have to lock him off soon, you know, Nick. Yeah, yeah. They're like, thing is, he pisses. He, I think you, he's yeah, just a bit unstable, man. Yeah, more than that. Thing is, though, he'll piss you off, and then you'll go put on an old school Kanye album, and you'll be like, ah, you know, if I let you off in it, because you, you, <laughs> you did give us some tunes, man. Um, so yeah, that's it. You can mute shit off Twitter. Also, there's a Twitter QR co- code as well. Um, like like Snapchat basically like Snapchat I think a lot of these social media and messaging services are kind of merging so like WhatsApp's adopted a lot of iMessages things like you can drop gifts and stuff into WhatsApp now you can do WhatsApp video calling which I've not fucked with as well so there's a lot of a mishmash going on which we'll no doubt cover as it kind of as it gets a bit more exciting I don't know maybe there'll be one app for everything one day who knows who, who knows? knows oh my who god who knows but um yeah, Nick, I want to say thank you for uh, kicking it with me over the uh, internet for this episode of Killer Killer Now. Hour. Um, we've got some events coming up and also we've got some good gear coming up as well into the office that we need to try out some quirky stuff as well, some odd stuff, Nick. Um, okay. It'll, it'll be a laugh, man. Um, what, what what are you building next? That's what i got to ask you before I let you go. What, what, what um, well, I'm thinking about... Um you know, building a replica of Canary Wharf in my back garden. I think I'm at that level now. Levels. And yeah. how many shelves are going to go in that Canary Wharf? Um, well, it's, there's a lot of floors in Canary Wharf, so there'll be a lot of shelves. But I think, I think I'm beyond shelves now is basically what I'm saying. You know, I uh, think I made it. Actually, shit. All right, Nick, I'll tell you what. You, um, just before I let you go, two more minutes. I just want to say... In all this news that's been going on and talk about Brexit and the US and UK, I actually came across something the other day, which I'm glad stuff like this still makes it to the news. All right, Nick? Yeah. The makers of Toblerone bars are facing criticism for widening the spaces between the chocolate mountain peaks as a way of cutting costs. Some of the bars in the UK have lost 10% in weight, a change which the manufacturer said was prompted by the rising cost of ingredients and not the effects of the Brexit vote. There you go. There you go. Unbelievable, eh? This is the big news of the week. Bruv, sometimes I'm happy that there's news like that around, man. Toblerone, a chocolate bar that is... I thought it was like a a, pre, a prestige chocolate bar. And now... It is, isn't it? Yeah, well, now, well, I don't know. Now, if they're starting to scrimp and scrape with Toblerone, bruv, what else is going to happen in the world, Nick? I mean, I think the, I think the world is already at a loss with uh, Brexit, Trump, and the fact that Toblerones are getting smaller. Yeah, it's, it's a sign. What, what can we say? I don't know. I, I like... All, all I can say to this is, is I'm sad that chocolate is affected now because you know chocolate is something that a lot of people enjoy every yep. class uh, man and woman young and old um and but i have to say i'm happy that there's still news like this floating around because it makes me realize that maybe there isn't so much bullshit go- going on in the world that we can still f- focus on things like that it, it, you know what, actually i think i've got another <laughs> clip of this oh yeah bro here's some ge- here's some people's responses to this as well this is what i love about britain the, um, the Swiss Alps has turned into the Scottish Cairngorms. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't notice. <laughs> what the to be, hell? To be honest, I wouldn't notice. That was one girl. To be honest, I wouldn't notice. What um, about the Toblerones? Yeah, she was like, yeah, the guy's like, there's, there's one guy that's really serious, like, yeah, the Swiss Alps has changed this, and the other girl's like, you know. To be honest, I wouldn't notice. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't notice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, bruv, um... Yeah, that's just a bit of news. And as I find, I'm going to find more and more pointless news to bring to the show as well because it's good to share that sort of shit as well, man. Different. Right, I might have to, to go and get a Toblerone now after the show still. Bruv, are you going to get an old school one or the new school one? You better go and get one of them old ones, bruv. Can you find the old one anymore? I don't know. We will find Is out. It like an antique? Yeah, but black market. To- Wait, bruv, you got any of that Toblerone, yeah? That real yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. The real I need the shit. old one, man. I need the old one. I need that old school Come one. On. A retro, retro Toblerone. But yeah, anyway, I'll leave you with that, Nick. Um, 
Thank you for killing some time with us. I've been Marcus Bronzy. I've been Nick Bright at Nick Bright DJ on all the socials. That's right. He's he's proper funny on Twitter as well. Check out Nick. Well, um, yeah. Not about that. Yeah, yeah, you are, man. Yeah, you are. and put a picture of the, put a picture of the fucking shelf up on your Twitter, bruv. Come on, everyone's gonna go to it now after hearing about your shelf. Please put a picture up on your I Insta and Twitter. I might. It's not. It's not finished yet. It's a work in progress. I don't know whether I'm gonna um, spray it, spray paint it white, and then like put some gloss Look on. Fucking hell, son. He's. Me- oh, you're not messing around, are you? Yeah, it I looks a bit he- odd because it's just like this brown MDF. Like it just looks a bit odd at the moment. I need to. I need to spray paint it. I think. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I look forward to seeing it, mate. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, hundred percent. So anyway, yeah. Thank you for killing some time with us. Bless.